talk about that play and then also his progression throughout this season when you've seen from him. The reason? Yes. It's, it's been good. You know, uh, a couple of games like LSU was not really his style of game, but when he was out on those wide outs playing, I thought he did a good job. But in most of the other games, he's had a lot of responsibility uh, out in space, which is what that hybrid's got to do, and has done a really good job. You know, he had one pass interference. He actually slipped, and, and, and really he got illegally picked by the receiver, but they, they're not going to call that. But he got bumped, and it knocked him off balance, and he slipped a little bit, and he didn't have good position. And other than that one play, I just thought he played really well. He had a couple of times where they tried to throw the little sideways bubble screen and uh, could have forced it a little bit quicker. But he had an outstanding game. And one sideline on that is uh, uh, McEnroe got about nine reps to sub him. And I bet those reps down the line are going to help him. That's the first time he's really had any true game experience. He did some good things. So that'll be something we hope in the future we can give him some some uh, rotation a little bit out there. But you'll see on that pick, it looked like he kind of jumped the play, or it's almost like he surprised the ball was there. Well, they were both up in press coverage, and the receivers, of course, rubbed it and, and it made an intentional you know, bump on him, whatever. But most times those don't get called. They look like they try to like to run a route. But he just got behind it and had to recover. And he never really got back in phase. Uh, what, he, what he should have done is just find, you know, just turn back, try to find the ball. But he was, he was obviously behind him by that time. Well, I'm at the pick six. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry on that one. The way he looked like he was kind of surprised the ball was even there. Yeah, because what it was, I think, it was, a, it was a three step route. And what it looked like is the receiver, when the receiver broke inside, the ball was thrown. And one of our other players, I think he had to keep the ball outside a little bit more than he wanted to, and it went behind the receiver. And I think it did almost surprise him, and uh, he bobbled it a little bit. But nobody else touched it. We thought somebody deflected it, but nobody else touched it. How is that, that hybrid position has always been productive for your defenses, but given that in the spring he was working behind Garrett at that spot and that he earned, earned the job at the beginning of the season, did you ever foresee him being this productive and having these three picks and leading the team in tackles this we, I don't know if I would have thought he was going to lead the team in tackles, but I, I thought he could be a really good player at that position. We watched him at corner. He struggled with some of the things and turning the hips and doing the things you got to do out there on that real good wide out in the deep zone. But he had some explosiveness and some speed and, and physical strength. And I just thought he was a natural when we moved him. Justin was playing so well at that time, you, you wondered, well, how are we going to get both of them enough work? And the plan was to play them both. And our nickel package had one of them at nickel and one of them at the backside down, where Josh, uh, Josh Holt just played so well for us. But Justin wouldn't help. And I think he would have been a productive player too had he stayed healthy. But, uh, you know, I, nothing Robinson has done has completely surprised me. You know, has some of the progress been a little faster than we expected? I think <coughs> so. The production really has been what we thought, man. Speaking of Justin, what's the latest with him at this point? Hadn't, hadn't, I don't know what the final decision, but it, it, it's got a crack in it, and I think coach is going, they're going to sit down and talk to parents or whatever, and maybe a uh, coach will make a decision maybe about Tuesday. Is that the right foot at this point? Or? You know, I can't remember. I think it is. It's that, that not the foot he had hurt. It's the other. Kenny can he Richard? I mean, is that available to him? He could. Okay. Yeah, he yeah. could, and I think that's something that he's trying to uh, – trying to think through right now because he's going to miss some games, obviously, but he, he's not going to miss the season, but it's a thought he's got, you know, got to work through that. Got time for a couple there's, more? There's, yeah. a, there's a lot of freshmen on defense around this league making instant contributions, including on your team, obviously. What What's the big challenge? I mean, they haven't gone against guys this big, this fast. And yeah, no, I don't know. It, it kind of goes way back to the time I was – I'm going to get real nostalgic here. <laughs> I, I was two years before freshmen could play as – you know, I was I had to play freshman football uh, when I was there in the next class did but the class two years behind me was the first time they let freshmen play and I remember everybody saying this is crazy these, these kids can't do this they're not ready for this they can't do it. they need that year and they need this they need that the only thing I think that has been true is they really do need that college environment for a year for academics and all that but physically you know kids are coming out of programs they've got better strength programs they're, they're bigger faster and stronger naturally uh, they're, they're probably coached as good or better than they ever were. And I just think a lot of them are ready to play at that level, and we're able to find a role for them to play. That's all I can say, you know. And same thing with these guys who are going to the NFL. You know, they started coming out early, and even basketball, NBA, you know, guys coming out of high school, oh, God, that guy can't play. And 
goes in the league in two years, three years, he's one of the best players. And it is what it is when they're at the prime, you know, age, 18, 19 years old. Uh, physically, they're ready. It's just whether they can learn it fast enough. Some of them don't have the competitiveness, some of them don't have the temperament, some of them don't have the fundamentals. But heck, you know, the, the physical talent, you can look at some in high school and tell, you know, these guys can play with us, you know. Was One more. Close with an update on, on Jeff Whitaker and uh, on Travis Adams. Well, just an update. Uh, uh, on their physical staff. Jeff. Jeff's kind of trying to sound like uh, Justin, you know, does he, does he want to try to come back looks pretty soon or does he want to maybe take this year, you know? And uh, the other one, I really don't know. Montrevious just got a bruise. I think he'd be day to day. You know, Cass knows they were going to run around and Montrevious wasn't, but, you know, one of them may be available Saturday, another one not. We really won't know, I think, until a couple of days rehab and then see how many days of practice they can.